Folks, we're back, and I don't know where we've been, but we're back. Yeah. And it's just uh, one of those mysteries of life. Yeah, if you missed that tell about Digger, I said he's right in the middle of the road, saw me little holler, five six two five four four four. You need to go on down and stock up on some of that good propane. I guarantee you that comes in mighty handy and feels mighty good on these cold nights. I suspect we got kicked off because you had me fooling around with them Chinese products. <laughs> Done with that. I'm right. Quit that for a night. I'm just you know, we'll have to make sure that they have tried that pump out on the Yangtze River. I'm more worried about the, the Yalu. Yellow Sea. The Yellow River. Yalu. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. We, yeah. We probably <laughs> could go over and live on one of those junks. Well, you lived a whole pile of it. I don't know why you couldn't live a whole <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're well known for living in a junk pile already. I got rid of those ducks today. The ducks? I ducks. No, got rid of the ducks, okay. Yeah. The ducks. Trade them for a dog, didn't you? Huh? Trade them for a dog. No, I didn't. No, I didn't trade for that dog. You took a dog on with it. Did you? Yeah. That's a fine little old dog. I know it. She yeah. said somebody throw it out at poor boys. Right. She walked it down here yeah. and wondered how it followed her home. Yeah. Oh, well. That's a, yeah, I like that dog, really. But he, he liked, he was a, a woman's dog. If Liz was standing there, went to the hood of the woman, or his woman's dog. And maybe that's the reason they threw him out. The husband got jealous. May have been. Oh, the dog looked better than he did. It was a good looking animal. Right. Makes sense. And Elizabeth, did you see old big dog in the middle of the road over there? The big old St. Bernard was uh, running in the middle of the road. And, uh, up here? Yeah. And we got out there and stopped traffic. And I said, Elizabeth, who you calling? She says, I'm calling 911. I said, look, that dog's got a better chance out there in the middle of Jasper Pike that if you send him to the animal shelter. Mm -hmm. And finally, uh, a couple of sheriffs come along and they turned the blue light. Everybody was real courteous. I mean, they saw the dog. Everybody slowed down, stopped, gave the dog a chance to get out of the way. And I want to commend everybody that did that. And the, But the guy that was going to uh, get the dog out of the road, bless his heart, knew absolutely nothing about how to move the dog along and get him out of the road. Uh, every, every time we went for him, we went the opposite direction to where he wanted him to go. And I knew he was going to before he ever got to the dog. So, uh, but everybody was very, very courteous. They stopped and uh, uh, they made sure that everybody uh, didn't run over me. He's a big old St. Bernard. He probably had some age on him. He's probably 10, 11, 12 years old. What happened to him? Uh, he went on out across the school grounds, you know. and uh, uh, So maybe he... Uh, Made it past the animal shelter. It must have been what happened whenever they had all the traffic jammed up here. Yeah, yeah. That's what it was, just stopping that, that old dog. He just didn't know quite where to go, you know. Every time I call him, get his attention, come my, come my way down, that fellow go out there and he'd run him, he'd take off the other way. And I'd have had him over and had him, run, you know, had him collared, you know. What was it down the road down yonder I saw that night? They had. <clears throat> goat. Huh? It was a goat. Was Why? It? Yeah, I, don't, I reckon they finally managed to get that goat out of the road. <laughs> well, I was up here on Loop Road, and I wasn't going all that fast. I think maybe I was looking for some place, uh, somebody or a fly. And here a blooming donkey passed me. <laughs> that looked like that he, time I showed Phil Fulmer running off the field and the cheerleaders passed him up this fly. <laughs> He, he, he was a single foot and right on up the road, just right on past me. Outrun with a donkey. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> ain't no wonder people get tired of following you. <laughs> Even a donkey had to pace me. <laughs> Pack horse outrun you. Right. So what else is going on with Bobby T? Nothing much, really. It's just... Uh, Everything's kind of slow, and people are kind of uh, 
hesitant and kind of a little bit tight with the money, and, and I appreciate that. No, I'd like more have, to have more business, don't get me wrong. But I like for people to consider what they're spending their money for before they spend it. it looks like you made enough money to buy you a new hat and talk about people spending their money for stuff. No, this is one that I had. And I uh, pulled it out last night, and I threw it in the wash machine. You're wearing it backwards. That's supposed to be in the yeah. front right there. There you go. It says okay. Looney Tunes. Right, that's all right. I backed in here, so uh, I guess I'd make it about right. Yep, that's my that's my Looney Tune hat. Well, it's a definite improvement. Is that right? Do you know who my favorite uh, Looney Tune character is? Tweety Bird? Daffy Duck. Well, Daffy had a hard life. He did. I was going to bring them ducks out of your place and let them have a hard life. Found a victim, didn't you? Yeah. Somebody make duck soup out of them. No, he's got them flying around. He said he'd never eat a duck. I said, well, they're, they're, I have. I've eaten those ducks. We, we raised them because that's what Daddy raised them for. Was to eat, and uh, uh, now, we used the egg, 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 we would rob the nest and use the eggs too. But uh, now are they as greasy as a goose? Are they what? As greasy as a goose? Uh, -uh no, they're not not as greasy as a goose. And this particular duck here, he's not dry like turkey, uh, but he just he just got good mellow meat. I mean, it's you, you can't describe how much difference it is. I'm eating an old white duck or something like that. I've eaten them too. Well, I've only had one duck in my life, and it was all right. It was a store-bought duck. Right. And I tried a goose, and I was a little dis To say I was a little disappointment would be an understatement. <laughs> Didn't The taste wasn't that bad. I only wanted one bite as I wanted. It tasted okay, but it was quite filling. Right. But the grease, how can you take an eight? pound bird and get 20 pounds of grease out of it. <laughs> I was, my kids were wanting to eat a goose. And my uh, kids thought I was crazy for eating a so goose. I went down to Food Line, which was actually where I lived, the cheapest food store around. You know, you had Kroger and you had Winn-Dixie. Well, they had, started in North Carolina. What? Food Line, didn't I know it? that. That's the Smith family. You know, the same ones owned uh, those Hardware, same family, but uh, I went down to, to uh, uh, Food Line, and uh, well, I'll tell you how it started. Oh, uh, I think it was named a minute down in uh, uh, Concord, North Carolina, not Concord. I was thinking the name of that town. He had a little old, uh, grocery store called Food Line, L-I-N-E, in one word, Food Line. Yeah. And uh, he sold out to this Smith bunch, and uh, they gave him stock in the new business. Well, he hung on to it and hung on to it, and he didn't do nothing. So he finally traded it for a riding lawnmower, the stock he had. One riding lawnmower? One riding lawnmower. If you ain't got none, he'd like to trade for another, does he? He said within 10 months, that stock went and would be worth a million dollars. And he showed everybody his million dollar lawnmower. And, of course, he had plenty of money. I mean, you know, he was already a millionaire. But he said, this is my million, I've seen it, my million dollar lawnmower. So I didn't think that stock would ever get off the ground. And I traded it for for a lawnmower. Well, the guy that sold him the lawnmower is probably happy. Probably. He so what happened to the duck? He, he went to the goose. Well, he went down there and bought. What? what oh, oh, yeah. Meanwhile, uh, back to the goose. I didn't buy it down there because when I saw the price tag of $17 for a goose, yep. and this was like in 19... 67, 68, something like that. I paid $30 for one. Okay, $17 or something. I said, no, I said, them bad boys flying there on a little lagoon on the river, and that's where they spend their 
time when they're flying to and from Florida. I said, I'll slip down there at night, which I didn't really do that. It's kind of like, <laughs> you, just, you just made this story up. Right, didn't you? I'm just making this story up. and uh, we'll Make up the rest I, of it so I, we know I, what I, didn't I, happen. I had an old double barrel 12. I want to say it was an old double barrel 12. It was a Parker. Uh, pretty, pretty decent gun, and I still got the gun, and so I got up they on the They didn't confiscate it? No. Everybody said, I'm, I never told this story okay. to the wrong people. I'm telling it to the world now. And it's I a think, lie. I he think really statute of limitation from 65, 66 is out. The statute of limitation don't run out was. on murder. I knew where the war, and I got in, I got up there, and I loaded both them barrels. I think I had probably number Six is in there, something like that. And, uh, you hollered them out and you shot them, didn't you? Uh, no, what I did, I uh, so that was uh, I had somebody with me. I said, when you turn the lights on, I said, my letter rip. We turned the lights on. I shot right in the middle of them, killed three. <laughs> you mean you might have shot in the middle of them and you could have killed three? Right. Then what? What didn't happen? So. Uh, I uh, I retrieved them and uh, took what I thought would be the best one and uh, dressed him out and I gave the other two to the guy that was with me and he gave one to my neighbor across the street and he kept one and it wasn't a bad goose really because uh, they had hung around my place for several weeks and there was so much for them to eat there in those fields that they were pretty fat, and the weather had not got all that cold, so they, instead of continuing to fly south, they, they stayed around a few days. Some of them stayed, three of them stayed there permanent. Yeah, I heard that rumor. <laughs> so, no, I, I, I figured two shotgun shells was a whole lot cheaper than $17 mm -hmm. for a goose. Well, I've never been a goose hunting. Looks like you've come up with some new shoes, too. Well, you know, uh, those shoes were in some stuff I bought. <laughs> Just to help them to fit. Well, yeah, those, well, those are just a little tight. Those are 12s, I think. They're my half 12. But I, I went down, uh, right before I got these, I went down to Goodwill. Yeah. And I checked what they have in shoes. And I got an almost new pair of Adidas, size 12 and a half, 12, I believe these are 12, for $2.99. So, I mean, my whole house is furnished out of the early Salvation Army. I don't see nothing wrong with that. <laughs> Not a thing in the world wrong with the folks. There's the shoes we're talking about. They are what Andy's. I don't yeah. know who's they are. Andy, I mean, Bob. You know what it says on Andy? It says Bob. No, I don't say Bob. It says Andy. Well, I don't know where it says Andy. There ain't nothing wrote on what I. There it says. Yeah, it says Andy. Huh? And I. And one. And, and I. And one. Right. A N D one. Well, no telling what name to come up with. You know, I went over. The day before yesterday, I believe it was. Mm. My daughter, who was a graduate, college graduate. I got one of them. Called me and said she had had a blowout on Highway, uh, on I-40, right where 640 and I-40 split out toward the West Town Mall. Mm -hmm. Gave pretty good directions. And was she in I, the road? Huh? Sitting there beside the road? Yeah, had a big wide apron there. And... Uh, uh, I called her and I said, uh, uh, she said, I don't have a jack and I don't have a lug wrench. said, somebody who ever worked on my car last took them. I said, well, I think I worked on it right at my place and we didn't take another. She said, well, I don't have any. And so she said, I, if I'm not at the car when you get there, says, uh, I'll be there shortly. Me and so and so, whoever her boyfriend's name is, says we're going out for breakfast. Well, I get there, 
It's a Volkswagen. And I don't have a lug wrench to fit it because it takes a star bit to go in there and get it. And uh, So when you come back, I said, here, take this money and go get me a lug wrench. I said, yeah, well, that's a good one to out of the So she went. And uh, I kept fiddling around because it couldn't find out how to get in the trunk. You know, it's a new Volkswagen, the motor's in the front. I had to figure out how to open up the trunk. So she come back with a $25 lug wrench. Well, is the trunk in the front or the back? Trunk's in the back and the motor's in the front on this one. Okay. So she opened the trunk and... See, I wouldn't even know which end to look in. I, well, I had so many Volkswagen with the motor in the rear, I was a little bit corn -fused. So I opened it up and I pulled the mat up and there is a jack and a lug wrench. She said, well, they were always in the glove compartment. I said, I don't think so. I said, there's no way that the jack or the lug wrench, either one will fit in the glove compartment. Well, I thought that's where they were. I said, no. I said, give me the receipt for the uh, uh, lug wrench. And uh, she said, well, she couldn't find it. So she gave me her uh, awards card. They would given her so many points for buying it. <coughs> she said, uh, they'll refund it there. Well, I got over here to the product and found out they would. And all they gave me was a $25 card credit, you know, which is OK. I'm going to have to go buy some filters for that big uh, diesel. But, to make a long story short, while I was there, getting ready to change the tire with the old lug wrench, the old jack, up for the highway incident management truck. And he says, let me get that for you. Took his little jack right up there in about five minutes, he changed that tire. And I said, thank you. I said, I appreciate that. I said, that might make up for some of them cotton-picking lights you got on your uh, stoplights around here. And he laughed. He says, uh, of course, he was an employee of the city or the state or I don't know who, who put it. He says, they're nothing but money grabbers. I said, I know that. I, said, I think he's with the state. Huh? I think he's with the state. Okay. Right, he says, there's nothing but just uh, a way to grab money. I said, I know that. I said, I appreciate you very much. And uh, uh, I forget, I had to, had something. Oh, I, my blooming uh, 550 wouldn't start. <laughs> Did he help you with that well, too? Well, I had him to uh, hook up his jumpers and make sure the battery charged real good. So I have to call. Uh, Chuck to come over all right, because he's a pretty deep mechanic because it takes two people to start it really I think you know, the little ether here and a little bit that wasn't what was wrong with it I had on one of my batteries I had a terminal where the boat broke and that was the terminal that supplied the power to the fuel pump so I didn't realize that terminal was broke and that it was losing power to the fuel pump because uh, see he could listen and he, and he couldn't hear the fuel pump he knew it wasn't running well I could listen I couldn't hear the fuel pump if it was running <laughs> <laughs> life got complicated didn't it huh? life got complicated yeah. did it so what I'm saying is with a college education all she had to do was open her trunk get her spare tire out and the incident management man would come by and change it for it. It would save me a trip all the way to Knoxville. $25. $25 on the uh, lug wrench. And plus, a trip over there for plus somebody truck else. truck having to come over there in another vehicle of mine and drive all the way back, you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes it just don't pay to give them a college education. Who's Chuck? Which Chuck's one? Chuck's the one that works up here some. Is he the one that worked on the truck? Yeah. Lives over here? Uh, yeah. 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 He's not a bad mechanic. He says he ain't. I guess he's well, okay. I mean, you know, you can't take what he says, but what I've seen of him, he, 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 he slid that transmission and uh, uh, that uh, uh, 
four wheel uh, converter over there. I mean, he slipped it right in and uh, done real good. But the, evidently, the truck sitting around there because I never had any trouble with it starting before. It always cranked real good. So I, I priced uh, a couple of uh, filters there, uh, one that uh, uh, separates the water from the gas, and uh, $187 for two filters. Uh, I mean, I don't tell them they can make them that cheap. I don't either. You know, I don't, there's a lot of things I can't see how they make them that cheap. Oh, they had some, uh, that was a, a wick, I believe. I believe uh, another fairly well-known brand was my $52. So uh, I'd probably go with a $52 one. That way it won't cost me but $27 more than that little car that I got. Well, if you'd have bought it at Napa, you wouldn't have had that problem. Uh, absolutely, and that's where I'm going to get it from. I don't know what to say, but uh, I, I don't like to drive diesels. I don't know how to roll them off. I can I can work on a gas motor pretty good. Well, you can roll a diesel off. I know. It. Hey, there's a fella lived down here on Paddy Hill. You know where that's at? Yeah, it's I just know like, Paddy Hill. Yeah. Well, he 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 had a he was working on a little old diesel. Volkswagen diesel one day, and he rolled that sucker down that hill and started it off. Drove that thing down the hill and started it. I'd never seen anybody roll a diesel off before, but he did. Oh yeah. It was a straight shift, so you. Oh yeah. You, you remember you used that. to automatic? You could get them up to 35 and, and well, start. That, that's, that's them power slip, power glide. Power old, glide, yeah. Oh, power glide had a pump in the back and in the front too, you know, and and it would crank. You get up 35, 40 miles. We high. had a. We was working on a Dodge one time, and starter on it wasn't no count, trying to get it started, and we pulled that sucker, we got it up 60 mile an hour, and it never did hit a lick. <laughs> and I wasn't, but I'm well, 12 years old, and I'm back here just to steer it. Old man tried to pull me off one time on a farm old tricycle farm old tractor, 48 right. farm old. Don't ever let your daddy pull you on one of them. He's just a going 20, but you'll swear you're going 80 back there behind. Oh, I'm not, especially if you're on short chain. Oh, I know it. <laughs> but we had a short in the, had a defective part. It would come from the factory without any insulation on a little old knob that stuck right. up there in the distributor in the uh, right. magneto. It right. just wasn't getting no far. I'm, Worked on it so long, finally. I'd, I'd had it on and off so many times, and I pulled it off. Right. I noticed that it had wore the, the paint off of that. And I said, hmm, put a piece of tape over it, put it on, and start right up. <laughs> Works every time, then. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> we got a video starting here in about two minutes, folks. Right. I hope you like it. Uh, if you want to see it in a little better video quality, watch Channel 12 tomorrow night at 8 o'clock. Uh, and you can still watch uh, this on the internet tomorrow night at 8 o'clock too on the second screen down. Um, just uh, tune us in if you want to see this, the video again, or some different foolishness in the prelude to the video. <laughs> Digger might come up and tell us about his new hours. I don't hey, know. There you go. He might do that. So, uh, sayonara, folks. Yeah, folks. Thanks for we'll, watching. We'll see you tomorrow night at uh, 8 o'clock on Channel 12 or back here on the uh, uh, UG TV and the FollettNews.com. Yeah, and this is from uh, Country Time, Country Western Dancing Place. <laughs>
Miss Ashley Denise. Hey! Thank you, thank you very much. You guys ready to have some fun tonight? <laughs> Nobody wants to have fun tonight. You guys can do it, but you guys ready to have some fun tonight? Yeah. All right, that's a little better. Well, thank y'all so much for being with us tonight. We hope you have fun. things it's harder at 50 than it was at 30. Yeah, I, I, I tell you. Now I'm talking about conflict. That's what I'm conflict. talking about. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Talking about conflict. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, yeah. Uh, it does. You know, pour it in water, you make pour a slab, or you make your retaining wall, or, or use it uh, in your bricks, uh, that sort of thing. It will continue to harden for 50 years. And that's Dixie concrete. That's true of the septic tanks. And uh, remain hard for several more years. Yeah, oh yeah, but they don't just quit there, you know. Uh, it, in fact, it's kind of like uh, your, uh, uh, those winged insects that only, that remain dormant so, for so long and then come a flying out every seven, seventeen years, fourteen years, whenever it is, you know. Next concrete they've got. I've got a tiger by my tail, it's plain to see. I'm 
this month. I think it's three twenty nine or something. And that I mean buddy, you can't buy two eggs and, and biscuits or toast and, and eggs, two uh, two eggs, uh, uh bacon yeah, or jelly and butter. Yeah, you just get a whole, a whole truckload of stuff. Of and I don't know how they do it for three twenty nine or whatever it is, but I want you to know that that they still got the ninety nine cent baloney biscuit. Well, you can just look at it any way you want to. Rainbow's got the best deal in town on breakfast. I got good help, and I like to eat down there. Uh, they've been advertising us for a long time, and and the food's still good. So I recommend everybody go down there and check it out. They're right above the speed hump, dip, hump, dip, hump, dip, sir, on the four lane, waiting on you every morning. I don't think they take off any day, but maybe Christmas. They work early and stay late. Try them. We appreciate the opportunity to serve each and every one of our patients. We we have some people that won't call anyone but us. If they ever call us once, they'll call again. 
but uh, we love each and every one of our patients and they seem to reciprocate and love us as well. You guys get back on that dance floor. Just take those older records off the shelf. I say, listen to my
I've had rubber donuts or bagels. Uh, do, you, do you reckon Napa sells boat anchors? <laughs> hey, I'll guarantee you had me one here by lunch. I could order one, couldn't I? <laughs> I could get one V8 boat anchors. They sell everything else. Up our cost, my IGA, they sell all sorts of car and, and machinery parts. they got tractor parts and boat parts. And I'm sure you'd probably get a boat anchor up there if you wanted to wait on it. They'll have it in the morning at opening time. Right. Now, I ain't recommending them for boat anchors, but I'll recommend them with anything automotive and almost anything mechanical. Right. Then if they got boat anchors, I'll guarantee you that they're built to sink. 5629406 if you want to call and order your boat anchor. Right. <laughs> Whatever you need. Tell them Bob recommended them. <laughs> Southern distributor for boat anchors. Yeah, yeah. Well, they may have the market cornered on boat anchors. What kind of an anchor are you using, mud, anyway? Mud? Don't write the two bars.
privilege of meeting down there on I-75 last week. And yeah, I was driving and I looked over and saw this poor lady with her piano just sitting on the side of the road playing. And I said, honey, you want to come be in our band? And it took me a little bit. I had to convince her, but you know. Turns out she, she decided to be in the band with this but Let's give her a big hand, guys. One of my good friends, Miss Darlene Pruitt. Oh, thank you. And that was a true story, by the way. No, hardly. But my son is wore out. <laughs> okay. Ashley's asked me to sing kind of a, I guess, a little bluegrassy little, little diddle thing here. But anyway, everybody knows it. Only I've changed the words on it. So it, I wrote it my way. I'm going to change the chords now. <laughs> Don't change the chords now. Do the same to old Dougie. <laughs> Well, what? C. 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 Well, you get a line and I get a pole. Thank you. 